Okay, hi. Uh, in this video, um, we're going to go over um, applications of stacks. Um, so this is different. Uh, you should first watch the, uh, the, the video about implementing stacks. Uh, in that video, we talked about um, the, the, how you define a stack, so what, what are kind of the abstract operations of a stack. Uh, and we actually went over a little implementation of you know, how, how you write an actual implementation of a stack using an array and also using a linked list. So this video is different. Um, we're going to actually look at um, some uses of stacks in uh, writing you know, computing systems or computer programs. Okay? So uh, I'm actually using kind of the same uh, examples from our textbook here. Uh, I don't think they're great examples, but um, uh, but but you know in in the sense that they really don't give you the uh, the importance of, of stacks. I mean they they are very useful in computer science and computer systems for implementing all kinds of different things. So um, anyway, um, I'll look over kind of the the simple example of reversing a list that our textbook talked about, um, and I'm also going to look at a, a, a the the postfix calculator. Okay. But uh, hopefully this video won't be too long here, not as long as some of the, the previous ones that we've been working on. So um, as usual, I'll post this example uh, source code uh, with the video here. So um, I, I am just using the same um, stack implementation that I used in the previous video. So, um, so yeah, I'm not going to go over the whole thing again, but just to review very quickly, there's a, there's a, a base class, an abstract base class called stack. Um, that we're using that defines the interface for a stack. So the is empty, push, top, and pop, which are the main functions that you use to work with a stack. Uh, and then I've got two um, concrete implementations of a stack. One array based called a stack, um, and one that's based on using a linked list. So a, a, a linked list of nodes called an L stack. But both of them implement the same interface. Okay. So that's what we're going to be using in this. Um, so, um, kind of in the first example, um, you know, uh, let's just build a, a little linked list by hand. Okay, this is just a very simple linked list. It has four nodes. So I'm actually creating all these nodes by hand here, um, um, and it's it's a, a linked list of strings. So so the the item in each linked list is just a string. Um, and then we actually link them up. So first is linked to the second one, second to the third, third to the fourth, and so on, okay? So if we wanted to uh, display these items in reverse, I mean, it's, it's kind of tough to do for a linked list that's a singly linked list that only goes in one way. So we would have to first go to the end of the list and display that item, but you, you can't really remember all of the pointers. You, I mean, um, so, you know, you can't get back to the previous one once you've gone to the end of the list, okay? So one way, we didn't talk about this when we talked about recursion, but, but one way that you can um, um, display a, 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 a singly linked list uh, in reverse is by writing a recursive function, okay? So we can look at our, our display um, um, uh, reverse list function here. So, so this is an example of a recursive function. So all it does, notice, uh, our, our base case is that if the node pointer that we give is null, that means that we've, we've gone to the end of the list. Otherwise, what we do is we first recursively call ourselves to display the, the information that's, um, that we're linking to. And after that's displayed first, then we display our own information, okay? So, um, so this this will this will work to actually reverse the the, the list out here. All right. So um, let me um, talk a little bit about how that does that though. Okay. So actually, let me go back to main here. So um, and uh, yeah, let me set a breakpoint here. So right. So no, when, when we first call display re reverse list, we, we 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 send it our first or our head node. Okay. Um, so let's let's go ahead and run that, and then step in there. So um, um, when this function runs, um, um, and when we step into it, um, so you know when when the, the first time when we call this function, um, uh, that where the the node that we have is our first node, the, the head node, right? 
So, of course, if, if you call it, it's not null. And if you do it here, though, it's going to call it recursively, but on the second link, right? So if we step in here and step into that, uh, you know, it hasn't displayed yet. It's going to call it, but it's going to call it with, with what was second in main here, right? So now we we're, we're recursively are, are in here. Uh, and then so on, you know, second we'll call it on third before displaying, and third we'll call it on fourth before displaying. So if I set a breakpoint here, um, let, let me continue on until we get to here. And, and then, now remember, I mean, I talked a, just a little bit about the call stack when we talked about recursion before. So, so look at it, uh, when, when I set our, my breakpoint here, notice um, uh, we're in our call stack um, um, uh, multiple times for the display reverse list function. Okay, so the the first time was when we when when we called it for first node, and then the second time was second, third time was for our third node, fourth time was for the fourth node, and the fifth time, the 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 node was null, and that was what I'm finding in our base case. Okay, so what I wanted to point out here again by talking about the call stack or the function call stack is the actual way that recursion is implemented is by using a stack. Okay, so again, th this is just um, you know one way that stacks are used. Uh, like uh, again, stacks are very important to computer science and computing systems. They're, they're used all over the place. Okay, so what the way that a, a function call stack works in a computing system, um, it's actually supported by the hardware a little bit. But but what you're doing is so every time you call a function, you're actually pushing what's known as a um, um, a um, uh, a, a stack record, record or, or a function record um, onto the stack. So what, what's in a function stack record is all of your um, arguments uh, and all your local variables. We don't have any local variables for this function, but, but those make a record. It's kind of like a structure. And you push those all on the stack. So that's why uh, the, the node pointer for my first call to display re reverse list function is different from my node pointer to the second and third one, okay? Because they're all different, different values, they're, they're different records that are pushed onto my stack. And then once recursion stops, uh, we end up, so, so when you return from a function, like, like we're going to do here, it actually pops your, your function record off of the stack. So anyway, you know, um, um, the, the, that this is what we talked about, how you use a stack, you know. So every time you call a function, um, it, it pushes a new stack record on top of the stack, and every time you return from a, a function, it pops that record off, okay. So in any, any case, in, in our recursive version here, um, we're, we're four, actually five function call deep in here. Now when we, we start returning, uh, we will... Um, um, uh, actually start displaying things off of here. So, so um, uh, this will display our fourth item first, George the Fourth, and so on. And I won't step through all these here again. So let me, let me go back to um, main here um, and continue on. So, um, so, so yeah, I mean, the, that, that, that's a basic, you know, that, that's, that, that was shown in our textbook, a basic way to reverse the stack using, um, um, using recursion, okay? So, um, but, you know, uh, the, behind the scenes, all function calls and all support for recursive function calls, really, uh, the, the, the basic implementation is done using the stack, using the function call stack of your operating system and your computing system, okay? So let, let's show using our own implementation of stack to reverse the, uh, the, the order of our list. So again, remember, the, the order of our list is that the first item is I am first, the second one is I am second, and then so on. So to reverse these, we, we first want to print out the fourth item first, George the fourth, and so on. That's what we're talking about for reversing our, our list here, okay? So, um, so yeah, I mean, uh, to, to, to use um, a stack to reverse the items of the list, what we're going to do is, is we're going to iterate through each item on our list, okay, and we're just going to push it onto the stack, okay, and then once we're done, we're going to iterate again just, just um, uh, looking at the top item and popping it off the stack, and then that way we will reverse the items in our stack, okay. So again, I won't step through iterating all through these things here, but, but yeah, the, the first loop, uh, we're actually iterating through the linked list, and every item on the linked list, we push it um, onto the uh, the stack right here, right? Uh, and then here, the second loop here, we are just um, uh, we just keep going as long as our stack isn't empty, uh, taking 
looking at the top item and popping it off the stack, okay? So let me set a breakpoint there and just go to that point. So you can see that, that yeah, it has the same effect. Um, we, we push the, the, this one shows us pushing the items on there, but then when we uh, iterate over and pop and, and look at the top item and pop it off, we get them in reverse order, all right? So that, that was our first example. So, um, and, and I guess, you know, one thing I hope you kind of remember from this class, this will be useful in like when we, uh, the operating systems, operating systems class, when you take it, um, I usually teach the undergraduate operating system. So we'll talk about stacks and things uh, like that again in that class. So, so, but, but it is used to implement function call stacks in um, operating, well, in, in computing systems. So, um, all right, so the second example I'm going to look at um, is the postfix calculator example. Um, so postfix notation, um, yeah, so you might be familiar with um, um, uh, you know, when, when you write a mathematical expression, an expression to do a calculation, like if I want 5 plus 3 and then the multiply, uh, um, 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 uh, maybe say 5 times 3 and then you multiply that, or then you add 5 or 7 to that result, or so, whatever, right? So, so this is known as infix notation. So the operator is inside, in between the two operands, the two numbers, okay? And because of the order of precedence, the multiplication should happen first. Uh, so 5 times 3 should be multiplied first, and, and, then add, and then the 7 is added on to that result. So you get 15 plus 7 to get a result of uh, 22, right? So infix notation, uh, or sorry, post, postfix notation, you put your operators first, and then you put the operand, uh, the, sorry, you put the operands first, so the numbers first, and then you put the operator that you want to apply to the operands afterwards. So if I want to fir first multiply 5 times 3, I would list my two numbers, 5 and 3, and then times is going to be the operator that we apply to those. And then the result of this, um, uh, in our previous calculation, we took the result of this, so, see, so after that, you could take the result of that and add 7 to it. So, so take 15 and add 7. So this is a, this is a postfix uh, representation of the same calculation, but you should get the same result, all right? Um, so, um, um, our textbook had an implementation, I have, I have a slightly different implementation of a postfix um, parser interpreter here. Um, let's look at it, okay? So, um, all of this happens in this evaluate postfix um, um, expression function here, okay? So let's look at that function. So um, I'm going to go over the, the, the tokenizer here, so you can look over the code. So I have a little function that, that takes a line, a string that's a line of code that you type in, and what it returns is a vector. It actually returns a list of, of the individual items, what are known as the individual tokens, the result of tokenizing this string here. So all we do in this, this function to evaluate a postfix ex expression, uh, we use a stack to, to do this, okay? So the, 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 the way you implement, the, the way you interpret a postfix notation from the tokens um, is like this. So, so, so we, we define a, um, 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 a, a, a stack called postfix stack. I'm just using an L stack. I could have used either my A stack or my L stack, whichever. They, they both implement the, 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 the basics of a stack here. Um, and then, then basically each token, so, so notice um, um, back to this, so whenever you see an operand, so a number, what you do, you just push it on the stack. So you have to wait till you see an operator before you can do something with your operands, okay? So, so jump, jumping over that here, um, if it's an operator, I'll come back to that, but uh, otherwise, uh, if it's an operand, the else part here is, is if it's a number, then basically all we do is we convert it from a string to a decimal. So STOD converts something from a string into a decimal number and just pushes it on there, okay? So the result would be that that would first push 5 and then 3 on the stack. So those would both get pushed on to the stack, 5 and 3, all right? Because those would be the first two tokens if I entered in this as my, my postfix um, string that I wanted to 
um, evaluate, right? And then the third token, though, is going to be the multiplication in this example that I was giving you here, right? So, so in that that part of the the loop here, what happens is what you do then to evaluate an op, um, um, a, an operator like like times multiplication, you just you just pop the the first two um, operands off the the stack. So what happens in this implementation? We just do two pops. We take two. We 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 get the two top items off the stack and do a pop to remove them off the stack. Right. So remember that that's our that's how we use our abstract stacks that we defined in the previous video. Okay. And then once we have our two oper operands, uh, the, our two numbers basically. Um, um, depending on what the operator was, we, we, we just do that operation to it. Okay, so in our case, if the operator was the star, that means we want to multiply these two numbers together. So what you do is you multiply them together and then you push that result back on the stack. So that becomes a new result on the stack that can then be used uh, for subsequent calculation. So in our case, after we multiply 5 and 3, the result is 15, we want to push 15 back on the stack because then seven is gonna get pushed on the stack and, and then when we get to the plus, we're gonna pop the 15 and the seven off the stack to add those together to get our result of 22, all right? So yeah, I encourage you to look through, you know, especially this function and understand how it works, but, but this is a, a common thing. So whenever you're writing things like parsers or interpreters, it's common to use a stack to do this kind of, of, of thing to, to actually implement your your operations in, in your uh, in your parser so um, all right so let's let's um, um, let, let's actually see this running so um, the, the way that this works if I look down in, in my main function um, So, so here, we're down to the, the loop. So what I do is I just get a whole line from the user, and, and then I send it to that function. So that function I was showing you just, just interprets one line, one, one line of postfix notation, all right? So, so let's just go, go and continue on. So you're prompted to, to enter a line. So I'll enter in the same one that I was using as an example. So 5, 3, multiply, multiply 5 and 3, and then take the result of that and add 7 to it, right? So the result, as you can see, is 22, right? Because, um, um, yeah, step, as, as, as we just step through the function there, right? Um, I'm going to do another one, for example. So if we want to take, um, um, oh, I need to continue on here and hit that break point. So just another one. So if I want to take um, um, eight, divided, 8 divided by 2, um, and multiply the result of that times five, um, and then take um, um, uh, two more, let's say five and three, and add those together. So now I've got two numbers on the stack, the result of this first one and the result of adding five and three, um, and we'll take those and um, subtract them since I haven't used subtraction yet. So. Um, so yeah, I didn't work that out in my head, but hopefully that's right. So the result was 12 in that case. All right, so like I said, this would be a rel rel relatively short, shorter video, okay? But I just wanted to show you some examples. Um, um, so we looked at kind of using, uh, instead replacing recursion by using a function call stack, um, and I kind of emphasized the fact that actually when you use recursion in a real computing system, what, what's being done to implement recursion is functions. Or, sorry, is is a, a function call stack. So the stack is used uh, to actually support recursion in uh, a computing system. Okay, um, and we looked at another example. So lots of things, par parsers, interpreters, and things use uh, stacks to actually implement the the carrying out of operations for for the. Um, uh, for your programming language, okay. So we saw a small example of that. So a postfix interpreter, all right. So um, anyway, function um, stacks are very important. So I hope that kind of gave you a flavor for them. Um, that's it for this video. I hope that kind of was useful for you, um, and I will see you all in the next.